to talk to you about identity management. Yes, um, we do have a full room, so yeah. If you are there, any seats left? No. Okay. Everyone can give it up for Fraser Tweedle. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, it's nice to have a packed room. And uh, yeah, I'm Fraser, and I'm going to tell you about uh, Free IPA, which is an open source identity management solution. So I'm a developer at Red Hat, um, where I work on Free IPA, and in particular on the dog tag certificate system, which provides all the uh, public key infrastructure needs uh, for Free IPA. And uh, I have a development blog. Um, the link is up there. And my Twitter handle is Hackwador. So I'm going to introduce identity management, and uh, in particular, Free IPA, uh, as a solution for uh, enterprise scale identity management, uh, an open source solution, of course. Uh, so we'll have a look at uh, the features of Free IPA, a little bit about how to deploy it. Uh, we'll have a look at the overall architecture of Free IPA and the client components. And uh, we'll conclude with a look ahead to what's on the roadmap. So, identity management. Uh, what, what is identity management? Well, uh, Wikipedia defines it as, and, and I'll just read this out because it's quite a mouthful. Um, identity management, or IDM, describes the, I, the management of identity principles, oh, sorry, individual principles, their authentication, authorization, and privileges within or across system and enterprise boundaries with the goal of increasing security and productivity while decreasing cost, downtime, and repetitive tasks. So there's a lot in that. Let's break it down a bit. Um, identities are um, entities like users, hosts, and services uh, within an organization. Authentication are your concerns uh, where you need to gain a degree of assurance that uh, someone is or something is what it says it is. So these are passwords um, for authenticating users, two-factor authentication systems, uh, certificates, single sign-on, and so on. Uh, authorizations are the, the policies concerning identities and what they are or are not allowed to do within a system. And uh, that concern only becomes relevant after you have authenticated an entity. And finally, the management concern is about how to um, manage these policies and identities uh, in an efficient and scalable way. So, you know, if you're a small company, you know, maybe 10, 20 people, you might have one sysadmin, he can manage it all by hand. Um, you scale up to a large organisation with thousands of users, thousands of machines or services. Um, that um, is not a situation where you're going to want to have to scale the number of sysadmins you have looking after this, these things uh, linearly. Um, that's, that's a waste of money and there's a lot of duplication of effort. So some of the technologies in this space include LDAP, which is the Lightweight Directory Access Protocol um, or directory servers. Uh, Kerberos, which is a, uh, it's an authentication uh, protocol where there's a shared secret on a key distribution center or KDC and uh, hosts and uh, users can authenticate to that system. X509 is the public key infrastructure you're probably familiar with for securing the web uh, and also email services and many other network protocols. Um, so it um, describes a system of digital certificates where you can have chains of certificates, um, each verifying um, other certificates below it. So when you get a certificate chain, you can verify it right back up to a root certificate. Uh, DNS is the domain name system for binding uh, names to network addresses. And NFS is the network file system for um, mounting user home directories on different machines they log into, for example. So that's identity management. What's Free IPA? Uh, Free IPA stands for Identity, Policy, and Audit. Um, we do do identity and policy. We don't do the audit thing. Um, so when the project was started, uh, audit was intended to be part of it. Um, at this point, it's been realized that uh, it's um, better handled by other software, but it's still there in the name. It's a centralized identity management suite. So by centralized, um, we're not talking about 
a single server. Um, when you deploy free IPA, there are a variety of topologies um, with replication agreements between different servers. So you have um, the ability to scale out uh, and have um, redundancy in the system. Centralized really means that um, one deployment of a free IPA is going to manage identities uh, and policies for one system and uh, outside systems aren't really going to be consulting um, a different free IPA system for information. So it's not a federated system. Typically one organisation will have one um, deployment or one set of deployments of free IPA specifically for that organisation. It has a simple web UI and a simple command line interface. So we want to make it easy for people to manage the identities and the policies. Got to hide the complexity and also provide user self-service um, for some facilities where an organisation might decide, well, we can let individual users manage, for example, their SSH public keys. Simple deployment is a priority of the project. Uh, how simple? It's one command to uh, install a, uh, or to deploy rather, the, um, the server, free IPA server, and uh, it's one command to install a client and enrol it in a domain when you've already established a server. And finally, we have Active Directory integration, so that um, is quite important because many organisations already have a lot of their identity data in Active Directory. They're probably not going to uh, change wholesale across the industry anytime soon, so for free IPA to be successful, uh, we need ways to integrate with Active Directory, but allow organisations to avoid a duplication of effort and avoid having separate identity silos. So if you have a largely Windows organisation, but they need a Unix group or individual uh, people using Unix hosts or providing Unix services, uh, we want ways for uh, people who are clients of the Active Directory realm to be able to get tickets for accessing the Unix services and vice versa. Okay, so and that's um, just a screenshot of the web UI. So it's, um, well, I've seen worse UIs than that one. Um, so, yeah. It's just to prove to you that it, it doesn't look horrible. Well, I don't think it looks horrible. Um, UX people might disagree. So the components of free IPA are the 389 directory server, uh, the MIT Kerberos KDC, the dog tag certificate, assist, uh, the dog tag certificate system, and uh, that's the component that I mainly work on, um, although we do support other uh, CAs. The Apache HTTPD uh, is used to serve up the web UI and the APIs, and we also have bind um, for the DNS component. So on to the features now. Uh, in authentication, we have password policies, um, so things like um, uh, patterns that, you know, that old thing, you know, you've got to have so many special characters and uppercase and lowercase, uh, and also password expiry policies. Kerberos ticket policy, so how long is a ticket issued for? Uh, Kerberos over HTTP, so for users who um, might be outside the corporate firewall or on a mobile device um, where only port 80 and 443 are accessible, um, you can actually have a Kerberos proxy running on one of those widely accessible ports and they can do Kerberos over that port. Uh, One-time password, so we have native hash-based and time-based OTP, um, or external OTP systems like your, um, uh, what's the company with the tokens, the RSA secure IDs and that sort of thing. Um, and we also have the free OTP app for Android and iOS, and this is a free replacement for Google Authenticator. We also have some uh, special commands for writing keys into YubiKeys if you want to use a YubiKey-based uh, OTP system. We also do authorised keys uh, management for SSH. So uh, for a server where users will be logging in with SSH, um, if they provide their public key, then um, on those servers, uh, instead of the regular authorised keys file containing the keys of people that are authorised to log in there, um, it can consult a database and uh, look it up in the free IPA system to decide uh, whether that key is known. And um, this is also subject to authorization checks. So we can authenticate a user, say, yeah, we recognize that key. Um, now let's do some checks using PAM um, to determine whether they actually are allowed to access this host. 
Uh, for users and groups, we have uh, automatic group membership rules, uh, sudo integration, so um, you can bind particular commands and command groups to the user groups or the users that are allowed to execute those programs um, via sudo. SE Linux user roles, uh, the auto mount capabilities, and role-based access control, uh, which is more of a free IPA specific concern. So who is an admin um, for free IPA itself? Hosts, host groups, and net groups. So similar to um, user groups, uh, we have automatic um, host group membership rules. Uh, one command host enrollment. So again, this is this ease of deployment and ease of enrollment. The IPA client install command is used to, um, once you've you know, a yum installed or app get installed, the free IPA client, just issue that command, um, enter a few, um, answer a few questions like uh, where's the host or whatever, or via DNS auto discovery without prompting, um, it will install the client and enroll it in the domain. Uh, host based access control rules and uh, SSH known hosts management. Um, so similar to the authorised keys, um, there's a facility in OpenSSH where instead of just checking a, a flat file, it can go and look it up in a database and uh, this can avoid, um, you know, the first time a user connects to a server, there's always that prompt, oh, you know, here's the key fingerprint um, and everyone just says yes and never checks it. Um, so with the known hosts management, um, no one gets prompted. Uh, it's already known within the system. Services are first-class identities in free IPA. We provide Kerberos key tab management and certificate provisioning via the CertMonger tool, uh, which also has the very nice feature of automatic renewal. So as the expiry date of a certificate approaches, um, CertMonger can go and perform a new certificate request um, to get a newer certificate so users don't encounter uh, warnings about expired certificates when they're accessing servers um, that are uh, authenticated with the X509 uh, key infrastructure. So on the client side, uh, we have SSSD, which is the System Security Services Daemon. Um, this connects a Unix client to one or more central identity stores. Uh, it's available on most Linux distributions and also on FreeBSD. And it supports free IPA. Um, it also has special um, special knowledge of Active Directory and some of Active Directory's features, but it can also talk to a bare LDAP server. So this is something we use um, when you install free, uh, free IPA clients. Uh, SSSD is configured, but you can use SSSD independently of free IPA, and it is a useful program. Um, it provides credential caching and offline support, so if someone goes offline or if your KDC um, goes down, um, they can still log into systems and get work done. Uh, it works by providing PAM and NSS responders um, that know how to talk to the identity store and can look up names, um, can perform authentications and so on. And there's also a Dbus API, um, but that's um, not a stable API and uh, it's not very well fleshed out yet, but if you have use cases for that, uh, we definitely want to hear about it. And um, we'd like to see what people can, can do with a Dbus API for SSSD. So Active Directory integration, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is an important um, part of what will make free IPA successful. Uh, the um, main uh, feature for free, uh, for free IPA and Active Directory integration is the cross-realm trust. So we used to do synchronization, but that is actively discouraged um, in the recent versions since cross-realm trust uh, arrived. So this allows you to manage your users, for example, in Active Directory and manage hosts and services on Unix systems um, and Active Directory um, users, so users of systems that are enrolled in the Active Directory domain can access the resources in the free IPA domain. Um, POSIX attributes can be stored in Active Directory, uh, or you can use views, um, which I don't know a lot about, but I think it basically does a, um, some transformation of um, Active, Active Directory data or attributes to something that's understood in the POSIX domain. 
There's simple configuration, so there's no Active Directory specific host or service configuration. Um, it can all be configured um, just by issuing commands on the Unix system. There's no data synchronization, and there's no additional software needed on the Active Directory machine. For old clients that don't have SSSD, or maybe an older version of SSSD without the Active Directory support, we also provide what we call the legacy, compliant, uh, the legacy client compatibility tree. Um, so this basically provides a, a tree with, um, I can't remember the, the name of the schema, but there's, there's an RFC that defines the appropriate schema. Um, with that tree, we can intercept binds and look up whether that user is an Active Directory user or a free IPA user. If they're a free IPA user, we then perform the bind against the free IPA directory tree. But if they're an Active Directory user, uh, we authenticate them to Active Directory via the local that is running on the server, so local to the free IPA server, um, SSSD instance. For server deployment, um, we support Fedora, RHEL, and CentOS. Uh, it's quite recently, I think as of about October last year, um, available on Debian and Ubuntu, um, but this is uh, less supported. So there are a few people working on that, but um, most of the developers on Free IPA um, are working on Red Hat systems, and indeed many are working for Red Hat. So Fedora, RHEL, CentOS, um, these are our main focus. So there's one command to install the server, IPA server install, and uh, you answer the questions it asks you, and wait a few minutes as it sets it all up, um, and you're done. All your infrastructure will be up and running, um, and you can begin enrolling clients in that domain, or um, hitting the web interface and adding users, adding groups, adding sudo rules, uh, whatever it is you need to do. It is uh, slightly more work to set up a replica. Um, that's two commands. <laughs> For client enrollment, again, a single command. Um, you can answer some questions, wait a few minutes, and you're done. Um, there's also auto discovery via DNS, which means you have to answer fewer questions. There's options for unattended install, and what IPA client install does is it configures SSSD, um, configures PAM, NSS, um, SSHD, all of these uh, services that are working together um, to provide this uh, nice experience for users of the domain. Um, get set up when you run IPA client install. There's also some integration uh, with provisioning systems, including Satellite or Spacewalk, which is the upstream of Satellite. Um, RealmD with the open LMI, which I think is open Linux management infrastructure. And the Foreman Smart Proxy. Um, I actually don't know a lot about these technologies, um, but maybe some of you do, and people on the mailing list do, so if you have questions, um, yeah, ask and, and you shall find. So the architecture, um, at a high level, we have the free IPA server um, with the LDAP um, directory and the certificate authority, KDC, um, DNS, the HTTP server. Uh, all of these services talk to the one LDAP directory. Uh, you have an administrator that can administrate the domain using the web UI or the command line tool or the APIs. And we have hosts um, that enroll in the domain, um, typically using IPA client install, um, which will configure SSSD and related services, but possibly um, using the LDAP compatibility tree in an old client, so without SSSD. Um, you know, a Solaris box can be configured um, as a client of a free IPA realm, um, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, most Unix systems um, you can set up. We have a Active Directory domain um, with Active Directory hosts and users. Yeah, question. Um, so, you, so you mentioned before specifically that you were trying to avoid siloed um, user stores. Yeah. Effectively, that dot. You mentioned before you were trying to avoid siloed user stores, but effectively you, you have got to because you've got AD and you've got the LDAP store on your free IPA. So I'm kind of confused by that. Yeah. 
So that's a great question. So what we want to avoid is duplication of identity data. In, so we, we want to avoid silos with the same identity data existing in them. So if you have a situation where you have your users in Active Directory, you might have services um, running in the free IPA realm and only the only user identities you might have over there are administrators for the Unix servers uh, and that sort of thing. But your main organisational identity data uh, would, well, it's common, very, very common to have um, an Active Directory um, domain with most of your organisation's users in there. But you might have a Unix group with just a few Unix admins and servers there, but everyone needs access to those servers. In that situation, you'd set up a cross-realm trust. Yes? Uh, you mentioned uh, there's a uh, prevent duplication of data between pre-IPA and active directory. Um, does pre-IPA has the mechanism to detect if the, let's say, the user uh, is already exist, has already been uh, existing on the Active Directory, uh, and also uh, there's an instance, yeah, the, the PK, like the PKI as well. If there's already an existing uh, uh, PKI uh, record for that user, uh, does uh, pre-IPA uh, check it, or does it have the mechanism to do so? Okay. So if I understand correctly, your question is, um, is there any facility for detecting whether a user exists in, in both Active Directory and Free IPA? Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, there isn't, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't be hard to write a script to, to go through and check for that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. For SSSD, um, the architecture, um, so we have the Free IPA server over here, which includes the identity data and also the authentication services. Um, this here, by the way, is one host, so the clients are programs um, on the same host that SSSD is running. SSSD provides the NSS responder for name lookup and PAM for authentication and authorization. So clients talk to NSS and, and PAM uh, according to their needs. Um, these go through the cache, which provides the offline and credential caching. And uh, then these talk to the domain provider, and the do domain provider routes requests for general identity data or for authorization or authentication uh, services accordingly. And um, yeah, there's just way too much detail in that um, diagram to explain, but if you want, um, you can snap a picture of that now. But uh, the slides will be available online anyway. Okay. So the roadmap. Uh, Short-term efforts, so these are things that um, are efforts that are well and truly underway. In, in many cases, these have already been released um, in Free IPA uh, 4.1, which is available on Fedora 21. And there's also a copper to uh, use Free IPA 4.1 on uh, Fedora 20. So DNS sec support, um, CA certificate renewal. So automatically renewal, um, not just of the uh, service certificates, but actually the CA certificate and pushing the new CA certificate out to clients. Uh, backup and restore scripts for your free IPA domain data. The updated web UI, so the, the screenshot I showed earlier is actually the updated UI. Um, if you use free IPA uh, 3. Dot something, um, the UI is a, is a little bit, um, well, it, it doesn't quite look as nice as what you saw. Um, improved permissions and fine-grained uh, read access is a big improvement that landed in Free IPA4. Integration with the Red Hat support portal for RHEL subscribers, and uh, these features are available uh, in SSSD 1.12 and Free IPA 4.1, and this is um, being considered for release in RHEL 7.1. Longer-term efforts, um, so these are efforts that are um, just starting or we're laying the groundwork. For these, uh, enforcing stronger authentication for select services. So if you imagine a situation where you have uh, some services that um, maybe are not particularly sensitive, so you say anyone who has 
a ticket grinding ticket from the KDC. Anyone who's authenticated um, can get a ticket to access those services. But you may have more sensitive services and you might want to uh, enforce a policy that says, well, if anyone wants to talk to this service, we want to make sure that they've authenticated um, using two-factor authentication. Currently, uh, there's no way to make those policy decisions. Um, the Kerberos CAMAC facility, which I think stands for container something multiple MACs, um, one of which can be the authentication uh, indicator data, will be used um, to implement uh, the ability to define and make these policy decisions. The uh, Kerberos authentication for mobile devices, so we had some people looking at actually um, getting um, the Kerberos client running on Android devices. Um, I'm not quite sure where that work is at, but um, there was definitely some work in that area. DNSSEC improvements, um, so our DNSSEC support is uh, fairly basic at this point. Um, DNSSEC is going to allow um, key rotation and revocation and that, and that sort of thing. Smart card login for SSSD, so instead of authenticating with a password, you can insert a smart card to your computer and use that for authentication. Customizable X509 certificate profiles. Uh, at the moment, we only deal with service certificates. Um, this will allow people to uh, define new profiles for servers and also down the track lead to uh, user certificates. So we'll be able to um, provision certificates for users to, for example, access a, a VPN server um, or whatever it is you may wish to do. These can be short-lived certificates as well. So you can say, well, we want a certificate for them to um, authenticate to a VPN service rather than um, having to have them do it manually using an OTP or, or um, a passphrase. So we can provision a short-lived certificate, maybe an expiry of one hour. They can use that to connect to the VPN. One hour passes, that certificate um, will never accept it again. And finally, the password vault, uh, which is a user-accessible, secure key and password store. Um, so this is something that will allow um, free IPA administrators to provide to their users as a self-service. Um, and it's basically a free IPA front end to what we call the uh, dog tag key uh, recovery manager. So a secure secret store. We have efforts to integrate with cloud forms. Um, we also are playing with Docker, which is so hot right now. Um, so we're looking at SSSD uh, running in containers. Um, so the free IPA client in a container for um, other um, services in that container to use, and also running the free IPA server in a container. We have some efforts in OpenStack, um, particularly with Keystone for authorization. Um, Barbican, which is the OpenStack secret store, um, we're looking at a um, backend for the for Barbican using free IPA or dog tag, and the designate uh, DNS component. Also, um, with OpenShift v3. Um, coming up soon, which I'm sure some of you will have um, seen in Katie's talk yesterday. Um, we're going to do another round of integration. So we have free IPA support there for people who want to deploy OpenShift within their enterprises. Um, Calamari, which is a Ceph management platform. And um, yeah, insert your project here. Um, maybe uh, your project is one that could benefit from integrating with free IPA. Um, if so, let's, uh, let's start the conversation. So adopting free IPA. Um, the GNOME infrastructure team recently adopted free IPA for all of their identity infrastructure. Um, there's a really good blog post. It's actually a series of blog posts, but um, start here. And you can learn about um, what their requirements were, um, why they decided on free IPA, and then in subsequent posts, um, what was their journey of adopting and migrating to free IPA. Um, you might have uh, knowledge of or be involved in an open source project or community that is currently suffering from um, a proliferation of identity silos containing um, the same identities over and over again. Um, if that's so, then you might also benefit from migrating to free IPA and we would love to talk to you and find out what your requirements are and work out how we can help you do that. There's a demo where you can go and play with the web UI, um, you can enroll clients, 
to see what that experience is like and to uh, use some of these features. Um, information about how to use the demo is at that link. Um, it's sandboxed and it gets blown away every 24 hours and started afresh. Um, you could put some really cool stickers on your laptop um, <laughs> if, you, if you think free IPA is, is a cool and an interesting project. And we've also got dog tag and SSSD and OpenShift, which I, I didn't talk about really, and Docker, which is so hot right now. Um, I've, I've got stickers. There's stickers out on the rego desk, um, and I've got spares if they run out there. So, in conclusion, Free IPA is an advanced open source enterprise identity management solution um, with a focus on ease of use and deployment. So, um, the, you know, the goals of the ease and use and deployment, of course, to reduce the cost um, of managing your identity infrastructure. The Active Directory integration uh, helps avoid duplication of effort and duplication of data for enterprises who are already using Active Directory but have a need to um, run Unix services as well. So uh, you might um, have a project or know of a project that can benefit from integrating with Free IPA um, or benefit by adopting Free IPA um, for your identity infrastructure. Um, we'd love to talk to you if that's the case. Resources, uh, there's a Free IPA uh, website. There's a page on how to adapt your web applications to use the authentication and the authorization facilities provided by Free IPA. It's a number of mailing lists, including the below traffic um, interest list, which is used primarily for release announcements. Um, the users list, which is general discussion and questions, and of course the deval list, which is where we make the design decisions and um, do patch review and so on. Uh, Freenode, Free IPA channel, and there's also a blog, what do you call this, a blog roll, blog planet, I don't really know, um, but planet Free IPA, that's a blog aggregator. Um, also SSSD, um, if you're just inter interested in that, uh, we have Fedora hosted slash SSSD is the main website and mailing lists of course and IRC and whatnot. Um, thanks to Dimitri and Martin who made the diagrams because I really suck at that. And now we have time for questions. Yes. Thank you. Um, it's it, it, one thing that uh, I wonder about is uh, how to secure the Kerberos server. Um, you know, like um, uh, if it sort of holds the uh, crown jewels. Um, you know, how do you actually? Um, you know, you need to make it available for configuration management and so on, and it needs its own management. And I have I've wondered about how this. Uh, um, you know, you, you prevent people from just say, "Well, I'll just go, go and get all the everyone's accounts from here." Um, yeah, that's a good question. I'm not, nor have I ever been, a systems administrator, um, so I don't have any uh, firm answers for you there. Um, if you were just in Olivier's talk, uh, maybe he would have some good advice for you in terms of securing Unix servers. I mean, the Kerberos server um, it has particular. Uh, it's a high value target, but yeah, it's not specific. You have that one high value target, or you can. Sure. I mean, same with the certificate authority. You know, you need to secure the private keys. So even though credentials aren't typically travelling across um, across the wire in an X509 public key infrastructure. Um, or, or in you know, network services that are using X509 to secure their communications, um, you still have those high-value targets. Um, my understanding is SSSD will also talk directly to Active Directory, is that right? That's correct, yep. And in fact, uh, you can configure it to have knowledge of multiple um, identity stores and authentication services uh, at the same time. Uh, no, uh, that IPA client install will specifically configure SSSD uh, as a client of a free IPA domain, as well as configuring um, the other related services. Hi, um, just wanted to ask uh, quickly about um, in the the current uh, IPA setup. Um, yeah. 
the the kind of domain admin problem you have in AD, where you you have to have someone that has the the, the rights to do absolutely anything with the directory that they like, and you kind of kind of avoid that. However, um, is there any intention on the roadmap to provide um, a bit of segregation in those lower levels of administration about what they can mess with? So, for example, you may have two. Uh, two vendors that you're using to run Linux infrastructure, you don't want to have to duplicate multiple free IPA stacks for each of those vendors, but you want to be able to limit their ability to, um, you know, add sudo rules for each other's hosts or, or provision users in a way that would allow them to leverage the fact that they're using a shared directory. Yeah, great question. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on that. Uh, I know that you can delegate administration responsibilities but I don't know if um, you can delegate them in a way uh, whereby the uh, responsibilities are, are branched into uh, you know, separate branches where people with the um, same responsibility or the same um, level of authority in terms of what they can do, but that authority only applies to a particular sub-branch uh, of the organisation. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. The mailing list would be a great place to find more about that. So this is kind of a bit of a two-part question. If you can get, uh, oh, can you get Windows clients to auth to the free IPA server, even though the user account sits on the Windows AD box? Ooh. Um. Or, so, or does that require basically uh, se setting up the uh, like Windows machine to basically instead of uh, being trusted by the... Uh, Wind um, the Windows AD, the Ignite should go to free IPA. Basically, this is leading to the question of can you use free IPA to phase out AD in the one seamless hit? Yes, I believe you can configure uh, Windows clients as clients of a free IPA domain. That's not a particularly common use case, or at least it's not something that I'm aware of people doing very much. Um, but what, what, was your, what was the first part of your question? Can you... Basically, can you uh, put in free IPA? Sorry. Can you put in free IPA to be able to phase out a Windows AD server? Um, so, if you've got Windows clients as well as like a uh, Unix clients as well, you can you? Well, yes. Cool. But, but, Yeah, again, I, I've never um, been an active directory administrator. I don't know a whole lot about that side of the system. Um, it's usually what people want to find out about, though, so I'm sorry I can't give you a, a, a direct answer to your question. But, um, yeah, Andrew Bartlett would be great to speak to and the mailing list as well. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I work for a develop, software development company. A lot of the developers run uh, Max. Has any of this you know, been tested with OS X? Uh, I don't know if it has been tested with OS X, but um, given that OS X is Unix and you could, you could definitely compile and run this software on it, maybe not as is, but it wouldn't be hard to patch it, I think. So um, if not today, then um, yeah, I'm sure with, with a small amount of effort it would be doable. Okay. Great. So I might um, might hit you up for that information and then send it to the chat list or something afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, it's about the uh, Windows uh, group policy on an AD. Um, I know it's uh, quite hard for uh, on the Linux or Unix side to implement a uh, group policy. Uh, is there any uh, future plans to populate the group policy on the Windows domain that's used by the Windows uh, clients to pre-IPA? Because uh, I, uh, you, you mentioned that the pseudo commands for the clients of uh, pre-IPA can be uh, controlled as well. So instead of doing it manually, I know, like, for example, uh, 
installing application and shared printer on the Windows uh, AD through Google Policy is easy. But with the Linux Windows, uh, Linux Unix, uh, we can do that through infrastructure management, puppet ship. Um, so exporting the existing or populating the existing group policy on the uh, Windows AD uh, domain uh, to be used by pre-IPA would be uh, great. Yeah, so I, I think that that is what the uh, views feature is intended to be used for. So where you take um, you know, group attributes or other attributes of users on the Active Directory side and then kind of creating on the fly the corresponding policy on the free IPA side that the servers will then reference the Unix servers. Is that what you were meaning? No, it's okay. a group policy uh, file. It's a separate module uh, in Windows uh, AD that you you could export that into uh, some one, one file format and you, I don't know how you could convert that or use it on uh, pre-IPA if that if there is any future plans to to do it or to support that. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to punt on that one, I'm afraid, as well. Uh, it's not an area I, I know much about. Yeah, that would make, make the system admin uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the mailing list will be, a, so the users list would be a great place to ask these sorts of questions. And uh, I promise you there are people there who will understand uh, much better than I do uh, what your question is. And... Uh, be able to give you a firm answer. Here. Uh, we can have uh, Linux clients directly as clients for AD. So what's the benefit of um, putting uh, free IPA into the mix? Why should we authenticate against free IPA inst instead of going directly to AD? Yeah, so this uh, again comes to the um, situation of um, you're uh, an organization with your identity infrastructure in Active Directory, but maybe you have um, you know, a need for a Unix group or you have a Unix group, um, they're going to want to manage um, their servers and uh, their administrator accounts in the Unix way. So they can deploy an act, a um, free IPA server and en enrol clients in that domain. And um, you set up a cross-realm trust. And so it's more about the situation where you have separate groups that want to um, manage the identities that they're responsible for in the ways that make sense for those platforms and being able to interop interoperate between those two different domains without duplicating identity data. So if we have a willing of I suppose not. <laughs> All right, so we have run out of time now. Um, if you do have more questions, I'm sure we are back, like you can go and ask questions outside and take your questions out there. Um, but on behalf of the LCA team, we'd just like to thank you again and give you a small gift. So another huge round of applause. Thank you. <laughs>